we're given the first two terms directly. The first term is 3, the second term is 5. And then after this, we're told that every term in the sequence after a2, after the second term, is the product of all the preceding terms. So a3 is going to be the product of the two that come before it. It'll be 3 times 5, or 15. And a4 is going to be the product of all three of these. Uh, so 15 times 5 times 3. And actually, we might notice a little pattern here. We might say, OK, rather than multiplying all this out, this, this fourth term is going to be, well, the term before it times, times itself. Right? It's going to be 15, it's going to be the term right before it squared. Uh, because, well, it's the term before it, and that term before it, is, is, it, it came from the, the product of uh, everything else. So if we're, if we're multiplying the term it by everything that came before it, well, that's the same as just squaring uh, the term before it. So this term is going to be 15 squared. And, well, what about our, our fifth term? The fifth term is going to be going to be this guy times the product of all these guys, which we know is how we got here, which is 15 squared. So our fifth term is going to be 15 squared squared. And well, maybe we uh, see see the pattern now. Our sixth term is just going to be the term before it, which was 15 squared squared. And then this whole thing is squared. And our, our seventh term is going to be this whole thing squared. Uh, let's see, to save space, let's, let's, let's think about what that exponent would be. Well, I'm raising 15 to an exponent, raising the whole thing to another. That means I multiply these exponents, and then I multiply that by this, and then that by what would be my fourth two. So this is just going to be 15 raised to the 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or uh, 16. In any case, we can think about our, our, our sequence this way. Once we get to the third term, every term is just the term before it squared. So our question is looking for a relationship between some arbitrary, some arbitrary nth term. Uh, I'll just, just to visual, I'll just label this one the nth term, although I could, of course, call anything above a3 the nth term looking for a relationship between the nth term and the, 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 the term 2 later, the term a sub n plus 2. We want the relationship between these two guys. And they're, rather than just continuing to call it the nth term, they, they actually call this t. Uh, so we're looking for a relationship between t and a sub n plus 2. So what is that relationship? How do I get from here to here? Well, we're just squaring this twice, right? We square it once, and then we square it again. We square it once, and then we square it again uh, to get over here. And that's the same as saying, well, raise an exponent raised to another. That's the same as just saying t to the fourth. And these are equivalent, right? If I, if I square this once and then square that again, uh, I get to this number. So these are equivalent. So t to the fourth equals a sub n plus 2. And uh, that is our answer. That is answer choice D. Um, one thing I think that's, that's kind of interesting about this question is, is and, and a little relatively rare on the GMAT, is that they actually didn't even need to tell us that, they didn't even need to tell us that uh, A1 equals 3 and, and A2 equals 5. We could have, in fact, we could have said, OK, we'll just call the first term a1 and the second term a2. And then our third term is what? The, well, it's just the product of those two guys, a1, a2. And then our fourth term is going to be, well, it'll be this term times itself, times a1, a2. Uh, so this is just going to be the term before it, a1, a2 squared. And then this, this fifth term is going to be a1, a2 squared, squared. And this is true whether or not we have that 3 and 5. Uh, and you know, once we have this, we can, we can use that same logic as before uh, to, say, uh, to say that, uh, that to get from, to get from, 
from an arbitrary term above a three to two terms later, we're just squaring that thing twice. Uh, so uh, our arbitrary term t to the fourth equals the term 2n. So kind of interesting that they gave us information we didn't need at all, which is which is not unheard of on the GMAT, uh, but but fairly fairly uncommon in the problem solving section. Of course, that happens all the time in uh, in data sufficiency, uh, but not not super common. Kind of interesting in this question, or uh, at least I find it interesting.